Check, check, check. Today on First Cup, well, what are we talking about? I don't even remember because it's early and I haven't had coffee yet, but stick around and I'll remember and we go live in 15. <laughs> Let's double check. No, I'll do that in a minute. And here we go. In three, two, one. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today is Tuesday. It's January 25th, 2022. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Good morning, Andy and Brian and Ray. And all of you, whether you were watching live or later, or perhaps even listening, thanks for joining me here on First Cup. Oh, and Daniel and Jenny. Look at everybody pouring in this morning. This is great. How was your Monday? I had a weird Monday. Uh, and what the what made it weird, what the, the largest component of the weirdness was that I ended up at the orthodontist for, I'm not going to call it the last time, but my Invisalign is done. I, I have to wear it for another week or so until I get some more permanent version, which theoretically will just be a more durable version of the same thing. Good morning, Chris. But they're happy with my teeth. See, I'm showing you. If you're listening, you're missing out. I'm showing you my teeth. Uh, I used to have really crooked teeth, and now I don't. And that's a really long story, but it all stems back from getting kicked in the face when I was 18. Whoa, Dennis and Liz and Frank and Tommy. This is, this is a big show. Look at all these people in here. And Kelly. And Andrew. Andrew says, nice teeth. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew and I had a nice chat yesterday talking about upcoming guests to the show, including whether or not a guest that was scheduled for recording today. Yes, this is a recording day. Andrew will be up here in a couple hours. And the others that were scheduled, one was a maybe this wasn't going to happen. As of right now, or I should say, as of when I went to bed, I got confirmation from Andrew that this particular guest was going to record. And I'm excited for this one for two reasons. One, this is kind of a big name. This is a name, this is somebody who I've looked forward to talking to. If you're in the Patreon, you probably know the name I'm talking about. And if you're not quite sure, but you're in Patreon, this next statement about this person will remind you. One of the most controversial figures in martial arts. So, uh, we got this person. Andrew got this person. Hopefully we will talk to this person today and you'll all get to listen to it. I have no idea what's going to happen. This is what most of the time I'm like, yeah, you know, I know where this will go. I have no idea where this one's going to go. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> so Dennis says, that's right. That right there is a million dollar smile. Woo. But, or as Dennis would say it, woo. And Daniel for those of you who may be new to the show, don't know Daniel's from the UK. Daniel says, I didn't realize healthcare in the US was that expensive. Ha uh ha. -huh. No. And Frank's in there in the chat. So maybe uh, maybe we'll get a, a good read on how good of a joke that was. Uh, I had to drive, obviously, I had to drive to the orthodontist. The orthodontist is not here in my home. And that's what made the day a little bit weird. So did some work, had, a, had like a stack of meetings, like just back to back to back to back jumped in the car, drove to the ortho. They went, wow, your teeth look great. Are you happy with them? And I said, sure. And I was like, we can keep going if there's more to do. And they got all confused. Like they're used to kids who are just like, I just want to be done with this. And they're like, ah. And all of their processes are built around children. Okay, you can go in and you can sit in the brown chair. Okay, not, not chair number one, not you know, the one near the windows, the brown chair. There's a blue chair. There's a red chair, right? Like they they make this easy for kids. And then they're like, okay. And, you know, then we can put in, I forget what they called it, but basically they wanted to put some permanent piece of something on the back of my teeth. And I'm like, no, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, that's why we did the Invisalign because I didn't want things attached to my teeth. 
And uh, here's the part they didn't say. And I'm surprised that they didn't want to discuss this with me. If I damage or lose a thing, which one's going to be less expensive to replace? A small piece of molded plastic or a wire that's been like surgically attached to my teeth. Now, I'm probably wrong. It's probably the same price for some ridiculous reason, but the piece of plastic should be way cheaper, right? Uh, after that, stopped off at a, uh, Panera, did a little bit of work, had a call. Uh, there's a, a, a very interesting, I don't think I can talk about what they do. I'm not, I'm not going to out of respect to them, but there is a startup led by a college junior that I was acquainted with at a recent networking event. And she was just kind of going on about what they were doing. And I felt like there's some, there were some gaps in how they were going to bring this to market. And I was like, you know, you might want to consider this and that and this. And she was like, oh, I was like, well, here's my email address. Everybody gets a free hour, you know, you, you can book on my calendar, like, let's talk. And so we chatted yesterday and she was taking notes furiously. I was like, look, I'm happy to help. People help me, I'll help you. Like, if we get to a point where there's like a bunch of work, you can pay me that, like, I'm not concerned. Give him back, right? Frank is giving Daniel the thumbs up. Daniel does very well with his jokes. That That is high praise from the, Frank needs a title, like a, a humor title. Director of humor, vice president of humor, court jester. I'm kind of leaning to something with the word jester in there. Yeah, we'll figure that out when I'm more awake. Uh, so I did that and had some meetings and more emails, went to the gym, played with the dog, made dinner, played video games, went to bed. Sucked really well, like bizarrely well. So that was cool. I'm getting excited for Atlantic City, you guys. And yes, there will be a show on Friday. I will do it for my hotel room, but I'm starting to pack up a little bit more. And you ever, you ever get like this before a trip where you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta regret that. I gotta remember that. I gotta do this first. I gotta turn that off. I gotta turn that on. So all that stuff's running through my head. And I'm probably gonna take a few minutes today and try to dump all that out to a list. I actually have, back when I was doing events every other weekend, I have a, a list somewhere on my computer. Here are all the things you got to bring. Here are all the things you got to do. So I'll, I'll probably find that. Just modify that list. <laughs> Andrew says, Joke Meister. Brian says, Miso Frank. Daniel says, Supreme Laughter Wrangler. I, these, these are all good. These are all good. I'm not awake enough to make a call on those but I pour more coffee and we get in there. Uh, did you guys check out Andrew Marley's episode? Some good feedback coming up on that one. Lots of fun. What a nice guy. I, I keep falling back to that. Nice guy. I enjoyed talking to him. And someone who found martial arts for the right reasons. And I don't know that he said this but I imagine he could have said he wouldn't know what to do without it now that he's found it, right? I think a lot of us have aspects of that in our lives. And for a lot of us here, it's martial arts. What would we do without martial arts? I'd be really bored and I wouldn't know anyone. <laughs> I'd probably be working a boring job, like a really boring job without martial arts. I'd wear like a ugh, polo shirts. I'd be wearing polo shirts again. Brian, Brian's following up with his title. Me so frank, like the soup, but aware of humor. I knew where you were going. I don't know. The chat can figure this out. Uh, oh, hold on. 
Oh, I got you. This is one casualty of a morning show. This is also a challenge. Oh, look, they're they're sanding the road again because they do that every day because of where I live. Um, one of the challenges of having a morning show where you are the only host is if I'm yawning, the camera can't cut to my co-host who is hopefully not also yawning. So, yeah. Uh, to those of you who are new, if you would indulge me and give me a, a, a thumbs up or a like or a heart or whatever on whatever platform you're on, we are on the verge of the show taking another step up. And actually, maybe as a result of some of you today, we will in terms of exposure and attendance. Uh, it's it's a weird show that we do here. It is fun. It is different. There's nothing else like it that I'm aware of on the Internet. We are the only martial arts morning show. And if you like thumbs up, heart, whatever. It triggers algorithms so more people see it. Hey, there we go. We got someone coming in. I appreciate that. Thanks, everyone. All right. That's enough of my my monologue, the monologue phase. Oh. Frank says, the jokester and chief. Jokester and chief? Jokester in chief? I like jokester in chief. All right. So today, coming off Facebook, we've got some stuff. Oh, Frank, this movie. Uh, uh, and then Carl's got a, a question, so I will read Frank's, and then we'll go on to Carl's. And just a heads up, if you want to leave stuff for me to talk about, we do it on Facebook, facebook.com slash First Cup of Jeremy. It's where most of the audience is. And, of course, you can always email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, if you don't use Facebook. Oh, come on, comments. Here we go. Ray says, channel your inner David Letterman. I'm doing my best. Tommy's throwing us terms in Algonquin. Sachem chief in Algonquin. I, okay. I, I, I do not have the ability to fact check that one. All right. So Frank says, on this day in 2002, the movie Kung Pao entered the fist was released. Here's some trivia from IMDb. Jennifer Tung dubbed herself. Steve Odekirk dubbed all the other characters. <sighs> Do you guys like this movie? Now, I'm not upset that we're talking about this movie. I remember going to this movie. It's the only time I've ever snuck a flask into a movie. And it still wasn't enough. I did not find this enjoyable. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people think it's hysterical. I didn't. I did not. Maybe I was with the wrong people. Maybe it was the wrong theater. I was in the wrong mindset. Maybe I should have not had a flask of whiskey with me. I don't know. But I haven't rewatched it. And I don't think I want to. Andrew says, I liked the movie because I got to talk to Steve on the phone. Tommy says, not a fan of the movie, to be honest. And that's okay. Just as there are different martial arts and we can train what and how we want, there are different movies and we can watch the ones we like. Two, to create the effect of bad dubbing, writer Steve Odekirk wrote a script of nonsensical dialogue for the actors to say. The real dialogue was dubbed during post-production. For example, when Chosen One says, but isn't Betty a woman's name? If you read his lips, he says, but isn't Yahtzee a family game? Okay, that's funny. And I appreciate that. That's some... See, there are some movies where knowing more about what went into it makes it worse. You know, it ruins it. This is making it better for and then our last point, footage was used from the film, The Savage Killers, 1976. The original Mandarin title being Hu Hao Shuang Jing, 
or tiger and crane fists. Actors were digitally inserted into scenes from the original film. That's kind of cool. And with 2002 special effects, even. Dennis says, it was pretty dumb. A couple of laughs, but I've never watched the whole thing. Frank's apologizing. There's no reason to apologize, Frank. I think we get more out of talking about movies where there's some disagreement about it than ones we're all like, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. This was the movie with the, uh, the gopher chucks, right? That was the best part of the movie. I've remembered that scene. That scene was funny. When we look at martial arts culture as movies, we have movies that are celebrated for a variety of different reasons. We don't have very many movies that are intentionally poking fun at martial arts and martial arts movies. Kung Pao is kind of the, the master Ken of the day, right? Even though there are people involved in the film and I'm sure they love martial arts and they probably love martial arts movies, they made a parody, a satire, however you want to term it. Master Ken, Matt Page, a legitimate martial artist who loves martial arts, but also loves poking fun at martial arts. It's kind of it's kind of like roasting, right? If you um, if you go back to the older Friars Club roasts before Comedy Central took them and kind of ran with them in weird directions, you would hear people say frequently, "We roast the ones we love." I'm not going to take the time to make fun of something I don't. I mean, really take the time to make fun of something that I don't care about. If I'm going to pick on my friends, it's because I love them. If I'm not picking on someone, I don't feel comfortable enough to pick on them. It's all good. All right. And then Carl gives us an interesting topic here. I like this one. I have a question on breathing techniques. I've been trying to increase my endurance during sparring rounds. I have found some unique techniques such as Reverse abdominal breathing. Have you ever tried anything to give you an edge during an intense session? My lead instructor is always saying to make a quick exhale sound on every strike, then inhale once you're done. For example, exhale three times in a jab cross hook combination. Retreat as you inhale. Is this the best way to breathe or is there more effective methods? This may be too long for first cup. So when I, when I think about breathing, there are two things I think about. There, I think about breathing in the moment in regards to, let's say, competition. And then I think about breathing and training. If you have picked up the whistle kick fuel program, the one that's all about cardiovascular endurance, you know most of what I'm going to say. It's all about breathing. So the, the exhale on technique followed by the inhale. I learned this from Bill Walls. Bill talks about if, if you're punching, let's say I'm throwing three jabs, right? Because he suggests focusing on the exhalation because nobody exhales and then holds their breath. Nobody does that, right? But if we get into a, a stressful place, we will hold our breath. It's a stress response. It, it is common. So you get people who hold their breath and they're not breathing. Well, if you're not breathing, you're not getting oxygen, you're going to get winded, etc. Daniel says, Jeremy has no taste in films at all. Cough. Best of the best. Cough. I, I, I do have taste. It just happens to be good taste. All right. So if, if we're focusing on the exhale, the reason being no one holds your breath out. So you're going to breathe back in instinctively. So it gives you less to worry about. Okay. It's a little more natural. It's taken me some time to get used to that, but it works. It actually works really well. You don't have to, right? It's not a really hard exhale. It's just, and there's an added bonus there that if you get hit, you're breathing out. Right. And if anybody's ever timed an exhale with a kick to the belly, you know how effective it can be. I, I remember one time I was a kid 
and I got drilled. And it was the perfect time, absolutely perfect, to the point where the person who kicked me went, like they were shocked that I did not fall over. It was nuts. I remember this. So yes, I agree. I think your instructor's right. I wouldn't worry about the inhale. I think it's one less thing to worry about. It's going to happen naturally. Now let's turn to training. I believe that mm, there is some kind of leading edge science showing the difference between training with nasal breathing versus breathing through your mouth. When do we breathe through our nose? When we're relaxed, when we're hanging out, when we're not doing anything intense. The moment we flip over to breathing through our mouth repeatedly, we are sending ourselves from a parasympathetic to a sympathetic state. What happens in a sympathetic state? Digestion stops. Um, your body devotes most of its energy to being in that state, also known as fight or flight. And that means that your intensity can actually ramp up quite a bit and be more difficult to recover. All that being said, there are athletes, professional athletes, who are training now only breathing through their nose, taking it as far as they can. And then if they get to a point where they would need to switch over to breathing through their mouth, they bring the intensity down. Why? Because they recover much, much faster. And that is an element that is in the fuel program. Because I don't just want to send you off to work on your conditioning two days a week. I want you to work on it every day. Right? The principles in 12 months to health, doing something every day, leading to more impactful, sustainable results. That is what's built into pretty much everything that we do at Whistle Kick, especially the things that I've done over the last few years. So I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. See you soon, Andrew. <laughs> Not related to breathing, but Dennis says, Daniel, when you fall down, a friend will ask if you're okay. A good friend will extend a hand to help you up, but a close friend will laugh at your clumsy butt. That's funny. I like that. For those of you who may be new, uh, if you want to go back to the episode we did about best of the best, it's all stemming from there. It's become our own trope here on and on all the shows. <sighs> Am I doing anything else? No, we're recording. Andrew and I record, and then I've got two interviews. In between, I'm going to... Well, i, I got to clean up in here because Andrew needs a place to sit. This place has become staging ground for Atlantic City. Is anybody going to be there? Who's going to be there? Dennis is going to be there. Have a good day, Andy. I'm sure other people are going to be there. There's going to be a lot of people there. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't seen some of these people in years. When was the last time I was there for that event? 18? 2018? Maybe 2019? I think 2019 I was there. So three years. It'll be fun. Um, that's all I got. You guys have been kind of quiet this morning. Oh, I am supposed to remind you. We are doing today's episode of... Uh, we are recording today's Q&A episode. Try again, Jeremy. We are recording a Q&A episode for Martial Arts Radio. We will be doing it live. It will include live question askers this time. Andrew's got that coordinated. And I don't know exactly what time we will do that. Somewhere between night and noon. So if you have Facebook loaded up, you'll get a notification. If you don't, that's okay. You can catch it later. Kelly asks, I feel left out. What is happening in Atlantic City? Atlantic City is uh, Alan Goldberg, who's been on the show. See who Alan Goldberg's. Let's see. Title. Action Martial Arts Magazine Hall of Honors Mega Weekend. It's the longest title of anything. Short version. Imagine free training day with way more people, vendors, and a big awards dinner. I don't have to have any awards dinner, but 
it's held at the Tropicana Casino in Atlantic City, and it's fun. And there will be people, there'll be a bunch of people who've been on the show, a bunch of folks that have been on, I've met there, and that kind of let it in. Oh, you should come on our show. What show? And I tell them about the show, and they're like, oh, that's cool. And Dennis adds on, we have super foot testing on Friday night. Yes, we do. And it says, you nailed the title again, Jeremy. Yeah, last time I had to say it, I was nervous. It's just so many words in a row. In a weird order. Chris says, I have a stock photo request for your time at AC. We'll send later today. Okay. Kelly says, Dennis, wow, sounds awesome. Party and martial arts, nothing better. It, it, it does turn into a party. And here is the best, I wouldn't call him a martial artist, but one of the best visuals I've seen, uh, Paul, Paul Milholland, who's been on the show a number of times. Is it snowing? I think it's snowing. Um, if anybody a, was a fan of wrestling, like kind of old wrestling, like the 80s, 70s, 80s, you might remember the name Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund's in his 70s now. The event hall is on the second floor and there's a, um, a escalator that goes down to the casino floor right near the front doors to the event hall. And casinos are pretty tall. So it's a two-story escalator, even though it's only descending one floor. Bob Backlund walks up to it, turns around, just like five of us, Paul and I are two of them. He says, watch this. Braces himself on the escalator handrails, pulls into a perfect pike with his legs set out, and just holds it and rides it down the entire way. We all, we just stared. And he's just like, I couldn't do that now. He did it at 76. That's the kind of ridiculousness that shows up at this event. I think it's fun. Daniel knows the name. Bob Backlund was awesome. Yeah. So, reminder, if you've got stuff to contribute for tomorrow's show, best place to put it is on Facebook. Facebook.com slash first cup with Jeremy. There we go. I'm getting there. If you want to support us, you got a couple ways. You can... Contribute to the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can use the code firstcup15 to purchase something at whistlekick.com. Or if you want the entire list, including some free things, some exclusive discounts, some behind the scenes material that we don't post anywhere else, you can go to whistlekick.com slash family. You got to type it in. There is no link to it. Okay. Remember, we do the show every weekday, 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Facebook, on YouTube, and then... Twitter or Twitch, depending on what's going on. Ray, I would ask that Zyler post that for tomorrow. We got some questions coming in because uh, we're we're winding down here. I will answer that tomorrow. It's actually a new game that I'm playing. Oh, Dennis says that's Mr. Back Bob Backlund to you. He's 72 and lives 15 minutes from me. That's super cool. And Tommy says, Bob Backlund, great guy. He did a lot of events for special needs kids. He really did seem like a like a cool guy. So all right, everybody. I send you off into the world. Do good things and all that good stuff. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care. Peace. <laughs>